Makers, and welcome back to another studio vlog. If you are new here, welcome. I'm Joanna, and this is Stitching the High Notes, where each week I share what I am making, whether it be knitting or sewing, crochet, stitching, whatever creative rabbit hole I may be going down, as well as a look behind the scenes of my small business, where I make project bags for makers like you. How are you doing? I hope that you had a wonderful week. I've had a pretty good week. Uh, it is now Saturday, so as has been the case the last few months, the weekend is where the meat of the making time has been, and that has definitely been the case today. You will have seen that I finally pulled out my tank top again, my Keen Wonder tank top, so I have some updates on that for you here in a little bit, as well as a lot of progress on my vanilla sock that I cast on last week, uh, and a few other things, including some shop news uh, with a new date for the shop update. I, I had to push it back a week, so a little, little shop news there for you. So uh, grab a beverage uh, you're making, and let's chat about some knitting specifically. For about the last three months or so, I've been working on a new garment project, and this is the Keen Wonder Tank Top by Megan Kelly. And I have had it on hold for the most, well, I've had it on hold truly for the last three weeks or so uh, due to kind of creative bandwidth, if you will. I've had to focus on some other things and yeah, it's just been, nothing's wrong with it. It was just at a place where it needed to be on hold for a little while. And actually today I picked it up again because I was like, I really want to wear this tank top before summer is over. Um, I finally have that skein of yarn that I had been waiting on, which was a little bit of the reason for the loss of momentum in finishing the project. Um, but I have to say, as I was working on it today, I definitely felt vindicated, not that I needed to feel, vind feel vindicated for having a little bit of a delay on working on it because I definitely was at a point where it was like a math equation trying to figure out how to do the increases and the way that the pattern is written in my opinion is not um, as easy as it could be. Uh, so it's taken a little bit of like rewriting and kind of of uh, choose your own adventure a little bit the way that it's laid out but I made it there so I have some progress first let me share with you the front piece so it's knit in two pieces the front uh, uh, piece and then there's a back piece I finished this front piece a while ago oh I love it so much and I'm using some beautiful yarn that is a bamboo silk nylon cotton blend. Uh, I have the ball band here. It's called Kobasi DK and the colorway is indigo. The color is 011 but when I looked it up online it's indigo and it's a 55% cotton, 16% bamboo, 21% elastic nylon and then 8% silk for that nice beautiful sheen uh, which also comes I think from the bamboo too but Love it so much. So this is the front piece, some really beautiful shaping on the sides. Uh, it's looking like it's going to fit pretty well, depending on uh, what part of the month we're in, if you know what I mean, ladies. <laughs> it might be a little more snug or not, but I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be really lovely. Uh, of course, it will be blocked as well, and it'll, it'll grow a little bit blocked but not too much um, given that it's cotton and bamboo for the most part uh, although it's more nylon than bamboo which is kind of a bummer but but the back piece that's where the hang-up has been and it's kind of hard to show because it's a racer back uh, but this is where I'm at so I've got this piece See, I have to kind of do it diagonal. I'll lay it down so you can see it properly here too. It's kind of hard to hold up. So I finished the, I was up to like here last time, uh, right at kind of the start of the shoulder shaping, if you will. And then I did all of this today, this kind of over a uterus 
<laughs> dome shoe uh, for the top. So it's all done. It just needs to go on some waist yarn now and I need to break the yarn on this side and it will be blocked as well as the front. And then I will be uh, joining the shoulders um, and then seaming up the sides to join the two pieces. And then I will be doing, and then at the last bit, we'll be doing um, picking up the stitches around the armholes and around the neck to do a lovely finishing garter stitch edge. I think it looks like, I haven't read that far into the pattern yet. I had enough pattern reading today. Um, but it looks like from the picture, maybe about four rows or so of garter um, around the armhole and the neck to finish it off. So it's looking pretty good. I also measured it uh, per the... Uh, schematics or what's in the pattern pre-blocking and I'm right on target. Uh, the armhole for the size that I'm making is um, I think eight and a half inches and I was like right on the spot for that. So feeling pretty good. I did join. I'm glad I got that new ball of yarn. Here's the yarn if you haven't seen it a million times already. Uh, sorry for the focusing there. Uh, it's just like the throughout it's excited for the blue <laughs> but I did join the yarn right around here so near the end of the shoulder shaping um, and after I had bound off for the neck right here and then was doing the shoulder shaping which is here so the neck uh, starts right here and then this is what will go around uh, the shoulders um, what to say? I just kind of made my main note about the pattern, which I mentioned earlier in the project too, that I found it kind of uh, confusing and figured it out eventually. I just think that it could be written in a way that is a little bit more uh, simplified. Um, it, I, there aren't any errors that I can see, but I think... I think just it's may it's written in a way that's more complicated than it needs to be. So, but I I and I really like help question myself. I was like, am I just being not lazy? Isn't the right term? But am I wanting to be spoon fed? Like, and I am not kind of doing the work that you need to do as a knitter because you're reading a pattern that's written for several different sizes, and that's just how it is. But I feel like I've been knitting for six plus years now and I've made some quite complicated things already and um, I feel like I, I know <laughs> when a pattern can be a little bit more simplified so anyway so that is that um, and it just needs to be blocked like I said is the next step um, so hopefully I will get to that <laughs> this week I have a little bit of a history with finishing uh, sometimes when it gets to a certain point on a project and it gets a little bit hard to finish it but i i am just so close i can taste it on this and i do think that i've finished today i think i spent about three about three hours uh today to finish just that little bit of the top of the shoulder and the neck um because there were quite a few increases and then decreases at the same time and then short row shaping at the very top of the shoulder shaping so uh i i think i'm i think i've knock on wood <laughs> i've done the, the last kind of complicated part of the tank top but paired with that and that i'm so happy is on the needles because i'm definitely going to be picking these up again tonight this is my vanilla sock that I cast on last week, week and a half ago-ish. Oh my goodness, I am so grateful for this project to have it on the needles. I've declared that I will be having vanilla socks on the needles the remainder of time <laughs> because it's just, uh, it's relieved my stress so much this past week and I, Got to a place with work that I actually was able to do a little bit of meeting knitting again, which felt really lovely, and it felt really good to have these on the needles. And I have my crochet granny stripe blanket too that I haven't, I didn't touch this week, um, and it'll be an ongoing project, so you'll see it again. But 
Um, that one I need to look down at and it's a little bit of a different rhythm so I'm glad that I have that on the hook <laughs> and then I have these and I will continue to have vanilla socks on the needles so I am doing uh, the shadow wrap heel again so I was uh, talking Denise the designer of this wonderful heel is a very good friend of mine we were catching up uh, this week and she had included this heel in her recent pattern, the Sock Exploration Socks, that I was very lucky to have test knit. Uh, and that is a cuff down pattern. As you can see, these are toe up, which is actually my preferred way of making socks. Um, and so I asked her, I was like, can I just like use the shadow wrap heel for toe up? And she was like, yeah, you just, it's the same thing. You just start at the point that you would start the heel. Um, if you were like doing a fish lips kiss heel or whatever on your vanilla sock. In my case, I started after seven inches. So I have a sock ruler. Let me grab it. Hold on. I'll show you. It's a cool gadget. So I have this handy dandy uh, sock ruler it's uh the sockruler.com or sockruler.com i got it several years ago and what i do is i have figured out over the years kind of for my foot and it's luckily also the same measurements for my mom's feet um and i will it's a little hard because now i've done more of the foot so you can't really see but I'll get to the point where it says on the sock ruler about seven inches or so on the sock ruler, although you can't really see it there, <laughs> but it's like right there. Now on this one, it's actually seven and a quarter. Um, and I've tried them on and it actually fits okay. And that's just because I wanted to start the heel at a new color. Um, so that I could like do the self striping yarn and keep it um, kind of going without like having like this little thin line of of uh, a different color <laughs> which I did in my early days of knitting um, and it worked out great they fit really well I love the shadow wrap heel I love the fish lips kiss heel as well um, and the shadow wrap heels very similar, it's just that uh, you also use triplet stitches in addition to uh, trip, uh, twin stitches. Uh, so I really, really enjoy it. Uh, so I'll probably go back and forth on whatever heel I'm feeling like I wanna do that day, but I felt like I wanted to try doing the shadow wrap heel on a pair of toe up socks. And now that I know I can do it and have figured out my recipe for myself, then it's pretty awesome. Uh, the yarn is amazing coloring book yarns. Uh, I don't think she dyes too much anymore. You just kind of have to check out her Instagram is how it used to be, but I don't think she's posted in a while. But this was from my stash. I think I got this about two, three years ago. Love it. Brings me so much joy. I will be keeping these socks. These will not be socks for mama, which is what I usually make socks for. I am using 2.25 millimeter needles, uh, which are US size one, and I use my Magic Loop Method Chow Goos. Uh, I have links down to everything in my show notes, uh, to my Ravelry page, which has more details, but yeah, love having these on the needles. I sometimes knit with nine inch circulars as well, um, but I, I still kind of have to look down for those and Given how much sewing that I've been doing, segue into shop news, um, how much sewing I have been doing and am gonna be continuing to do, these are much easier on my hands. Um, for sewing, there are you know so many different elements to constructing, um, but for the project bags, especially like turning them inside out or especially when I start doing the notions bags that I make they're teeny tiny so you just are using a lot of the same muscles in your fingers and in small movements that you would do for nine inch circulars um, and so I kind of have to reserve that time for <laughs> sewing right now and these are just so easy for me to use I don't like that there's like a ladder that happens but it blocks out or you know I hardly ever actually block my 
<laughs> socks confession time um i just start wearing them and then eventually wash them so and i've heard other people do it too so i feel once again vindicated why am i feeling like i need to be vindicated anyway that is my knitting for this week and what i have been making it feels so good to be at the weekend and to have accomplished that big section of my tank top and to be on to the next bit and with the end on the horizon in terms of the next garment that i'm going to be casting on i'm still trying to figure out uh what i want to do i think first i'm going to be making a charm set um because fall is upon us i don't know about y'all but i am like this this past week especially i am feeling the call of fall <laughs> Uh, and uh, there's some fall charms that I got um, that were designed by Susan B. Anderson and her uh, company, her yarn company, Barrett Wool, had a kit uh, last year. Maybe they do again. I'm not sure. I haven't looked at her website in some time. Um, with these cute little fall charm kits, little pumpkins and uh, yeah, just so, so cute little leaves and acorns. So that's something I would like to make next after my tank top in addition to my zen knitting <laughs> that I like to call, which is the sock and my crochet blanket. A little bit of shop news. I announced over on Instagram this week that the next shop update has been delayed just a week and it'll be on Monday, August 23rd at 10 a.m. Pacific instead of uh, this coming Monday. So August 23rd at 10 a.m. Pacific. Uh, the reasons why I just needed a little bit more time to finish up the bags, the two new collections or returning collection and a new collection that are coming to the shop. Uh, balancing it with work of course my main job and career but also uh, with some other projects that have been going on at the same time including a collaboration that is getting ready to go out the door the pre-orders uh, by Trilogy Yarns lovely Nancy uh, for her Halloween practical magic advent kits those are going to be going out very soon and I've been making a uh, an exclusive drawstring bag for those kits so I've been finishing those up unfortunately I can't share those with you yet so hopefully Soon, once everybody has received their packages in a couple of, well, they'll get them sooner, but I'll, I'll show you in the future what those bags look like. They're so cool. They're so like witchy vibes. And they, I will say they have like some roses on them, which remind me of practical magic and the rose bushes that, you know, in the story, but I've been loving working on those bags as well. So hence need a little bit extra time for the next shop update uh, for you all. Uh, I'm going to be having the return of this late summer fireflies collection and all of the variety of different bags, as well as a new uh, collection uh, that I'm calling summer magic uh, that has a real summer of love, um, moon, mushroom kind of vibe to it it's really really cool like vibrant fabric so more next week's vlog i'll be showing you a full preview of all of those guys all those new bags um as well as maybe a sneak preview of the bags that will be coming in september which will be the first round of fall bags which i'm really excited about too so things are are hopping and happening um over in the shop which is really exciting and i wanted to also share i just got this in the mail like literally i picked it up maybe 15 20 minutes ago and i learned about it searching desperately for new zipper foot so this is kind of like a tool talk i showed my sock ruler and now i'm gonna talk about this exciting thing so this is a hinged zipper foot for my machine and what it is try to hide my face is my hope and my dream and my desire <laughs> is that i can just use this foot in this one setting for doing my zippers so that i don't have to use the zipper foot that came with my machine that works great and it's a miles improvement it's a huge improvement um from my domestic machine that i had before 
I still have, but that I used before for the shop. I now have a Juki TL 2010Q, which is a semi-professional, more industrial machine, which has been amazing for my shop. And it's just a godsend, really. Um, but I just still feel, felt like I hadn't really cracked the nut <laughs> for a super consistent zip. Um, and just knowing how much I am going to be sewing this fall, um, not only for just the monthly collections that I want to bring to you all, but also for the holiday boxes that I've already started to prepare, um, as well as just Christmas bags and Christmas gifts. And I'm going to be introducing, hopefully in September, knock on wood, um, a new product to the shop, some book sleeves. Thank you all so much for your feedback um, in last week's vlog about those. I'm so excited that you're excited about the possibility of those as well. Um, but yeah, I needed, I needed a more handy tool. So I'm really hoping that this will help out. It'll be a lot quicker. Um, it's a really thin little foot. So I think it might help with the sight lines and making things a little bit more consistent and, I'm, I'm going to try it out after I, I chat with you all here. So I'll put in some uh, footage at the very end of this vlog. So stay tuned to for some post credits. But it's a little hinge. So that's really great because it can go over the really thick parts of the bags at the beginning of it. Because I, I make pretty thick bags. Um, and then uh, what else was I going to say about this? I just, yeah, just super hyped about it. So it's... Fingers crossed, y'all. This little hinged foot will be the the key <laughs> to everything. <laughs> and that's going to do it for this week's chatty chatty vlog. I hope that you all are doing well, that you had a lovely week. Here is to a wonderful week of making ahead. I hope it's full of creativity for you and full of joy that you're stitching in those high notes into your everyday. And I will see you all next week. Bye. Never know. Yeah, this is what I had before. Oh, that looks better though. Okay. Okay, that looks really good. And now for the top seam. There. I told you my life was beginning. True edge. So, not too shabby. Looks pretty good.